There's a location in the Western Sahara Desert of Mauritania called the Rishat Structure. It's also commonly referred to as the Eye of the Sahara. And it says, lost ancient Roman map has Atlantis and Sahara Africa. To put things into perspective, the Sahara covers an incredible 9.2 million kilometers square, which is almost the same size as China and a total of 8% of the Earth's land area. With that much room, you could fit in five Mexicos, give or take. As much as we think we know about this magnificent titan of a desert, there are numerous mysteries that shroud the Sahara which haven't been completely explained. Although researchers, geologists, and scientists have been hard at work searching for answers, it seems like they've been hidden away in the desert sands. With blistering hot temperatures and barely any flora or fauna to see, the Sahara is a massive challenge to study. So, what actually lies beneath the sandy dune of this arid colossus? For those of you who didn't know, the Sahara was once a big ocean before it became one of the driest places on Earth. The period was around 100 to 50 million years ago. Evidence of the lost Tethys Ocean can be found in Wadi al hitton in Egypt. The site known as Whale Valley is probably one of the best sites for discovering ancient whale fossils, even though it is one of the unlikeliest places researchers could ever look. The fossils here show how whales changed from creatures that lived on land to ones that lived at sea their whole lives. The ancestors of modern whales were covered in sediment when they died 37 million years ago in the sea. And as the crust of the earth rose, their former habitat was transformed into land. Egyptian scientists have discovered a 43 million year old fossil in the Sahara Desert in Egypt of a now extinct amphibious four-legged whale if you had thought they were just regular whales. Yeah, four-legged whales. Scientists are studying the 15 meter long or 50 foot long skeletons. Researchers say that this creature had unique features of the skull and that its mandible showed that it could use oral mechanical processing more efficiently. Furthermore, these walking whales had a strong raptorial feeding style. Some Jurassic Park stuff right there. Abdullah Gowar, one of the scientists said, We discovered how fierce and deadly its powerful jaws are capable of tearing a wide range of prey. This whale was a god of death to most of the animals that lived in its area. The new whale was named Phyomycetus Anubis, after the ancient Egyptian god Anubis, who was associated with mummification and the afterlife. It would have been a pretty effective killer back then, kind of what the killer whale is today. More is being researched about these whales, as are the creatures they shared the sea with. Besides whale bones, the teeth of large and vicious sharks have also been found. This is just one of the numerous mysteries the Sahara holds. Considering conditions of the desert, it's not the easiest thing to research that part of the planet even with the kinds of technologies we currently have. There can't really be anything under the sands of the Sahara, can there? The lake was created around 250,000 years ago when the Nile River pushed through a low channel near Wadi Tushka. It flooded the eastern Sahara and at its highest level covered more than 42,000 square miles. To put that into perspective, that's about the size of Kentucky right there. NASA's Shuttle Radar Topography Mission released two images that show the size of a mega lake in the Sahara Desert that is 810 feet above sea level and covers 42,000 square miles, and a smaller lake that is 623 feet above sea level. Professor Ted Maxwell, a geologist at the National Air and Space Museum, along with a few colleagues, recently spotted evidence of the lake while studying radar data from Egypt. Geologists put together the profile of an ancient mega lake using images of windblown sediments, which are sediments produced by running water and bedrock seen by radar beneath the desert sands. Because of the extreme conditions in Egypt, radar was able to see subsurface features more clearly. Buried channels can be detected as much as 50 feet below the surface of the desert. The Kizaba Oasis in southern Egypt is along one of the ancient water courses that geologists found using space shell topographic data. Water is 6.5 to 9.5 feet below the surface at the moment. Fish fossils found in deposits about 250 miles west of the Nile and at 810 feet above sea level were used by scientists to estimate that the Nile once flooded the entire Kizaba Tushka depression of Egypt, creating this giant lake. A lake covering some 42,000 square miles corresponds to the location of ancient human settlements near the areas of Salima and Tarfawi. As with most settlements, having a source of water would have been desirable, hence the existence in that location. It was found that a second lower level lake at 623 feet above sea level could have existed based on the location and elevation of different set of archaeological sites near Bir Kishba. 
This one is about 18,600 square miles. The size of the second lake was calculated using the elevation of the Tushka Channel through which the water of the Nile used to flow into the desert. Scientists say that these lakes add to growing evidence that there were many early and middle Pleistocene lakes across North Africa that could have helped human migration patterns. We might not know for sure without solid evidence. Unlike the Eye of Sauron, the Eye of the Sahara actually exists, and for the longest time it was hidden in plain sight. It is because this huge and mysterious geological formation is difficult to spot from ground level if you are just walking around the desert. It turns out that we only found this wonderful cartwheel galaxy shape in the sands when we started sending people into space. The weird thing is that scientists don't really know much about it even after we found it. They do. I mean, we wouldn't genuinely be talking about it if they didn't have some idea about it. You get what I mean, right? Anyway, the Eye of the Sahara, which is geographically known as the Rechat structure, is located in the Western Sahara Desert in Mauritania. On the ground, it's about 25 miles across. During the Gemini 4 mission, a four-day orbit around Earth in 1965, the astronauts were asked to take photos of Earth's terrain. According to reports, our space explorers were particularly asked to look for large circular features that might be the roots of impact structures. Impact craters are geologically important because they provide us with information about the history of the Earth. It is also helpful to know how many times space rocks have crashed into our planet, you know, because it can help scientists make predictions about the future. The Eye of the Sahara was thought to be an impact crater, but scientists didn't find enough rock to make that guess. There is a much more complicated story behind the geological monument than the theories that have made way today. The eye's main ring structure is composed of eroded remains of what was once a dome of layers of the Earth's crust. Two Canadian geologists have a working theory about the origins of the Eye of the Sahara, but scientists are still questioning its true formation. They believe that the eye formed over 100 million years ago when the supercontinent Pangaea was being torn apart by plate tectonics and what are now Africa and South America were being torn away from each other. It was a dome of layers of rock that pushed up towards the surface, but didn't make it all the way. It was like a zit. Moreover, this created lines circling the eye and crossing it. Additionally, the molten rock dissolved limestone near the center of the eye, which collapsed to form a special type of rock called breccia. A little after 100 million years ago, the eye erupted violently. That blew out the bubble, and erosion did the rest of the work to make the eye we know today. The rings are made of different types of rock that erode at different speeds. During the explosion, volcanic rock was created near the center of the eye, creating a paler circle. Because so much of the Sahara Desert is an unbroken sea of sand, most modern astronauts are fond of the eye. Eye is a breath of fresh air, visually speaking, and now it has become a key landmark for them. Some people believe that the Eye of the Sahara is actually the remains of Atlantis, which Plato described as concentric rings of water and land. That's for historians to decide if it even existed. But even though it's still a mystery, the geological history this formation reveals is way more interesting. So what do you think? What really is beneath the sandy dunes of the Sahara? How do you think the Eye of the Sahara was formed? And will it ever make the Sahara survivable? Please let us know in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching Space Rumor.